Welcome to HD Designed Crochet, HGDC. I'm Heather, the designer of Granny Square Patterns for my tribe. I went from corporate lawyer being told what to do to full-time self-employed crochet designer doing what pleases my soul. Now, I also champion Yarny Creatives just like you to build income streams from your passion. Join me on my mission to change the world one crochet pattern at a time. Hey tribe, welcome back to HD Designs Crochet, HDDC. I'm Heather, 32 years old. I am currently 36 weeks pregnant. I'm a self-employed crochet designer and this is my channel all about crochet and designing. So if you're brand new, hi, hello and welcome to the tribe. And if you're returning, what's good, what's happening? I hope that you're all tickety-boo. <laughs> I have been asked what tickety-boo means. Tickety-boo just means I hope that you're all good, everything's okay, everything's ticking along. Today's vlog is one of those typical sit down and chat with me um, vlogs that you'll be used to. So I have got finished objects, I've got works in progress, and I've got acquisitions and I've got updates. And you can probably see by this pile of stuff, there's a fair amount of granny squares going on around here. Wanna see? Sounds like Tennessee. So grab a cup of something nice. I'm absolutely mad for Tango Orange at the moment. So maybe you want to join me with that and grab a project and let's get to it, shall we? First things first, finished objects. Now, last time I did a sit down chat, I think I had a couple of months to update you on because things have been going on with my pregnancy. Um, but I did have a fair few projects to share with you. This month, April 2022, I finished a couple of baby objects, um, which I have recorded a separate vlog for. Um, but I really wanted to show you this one. So this is my first finished object. It's a granny square blanket, of course. I wanted to make a granny square blanket for baby Taylor who is due from the 4th of June, if you're wondering. And I had quite a few different design ideas in mind, but I knew that I wanted something small that could like go on their car seat. So I actually started making a much bigger one, which I'm hoping that, well, I mean, all of that has changed, so I'll have to tell you about that in whips. But originally, if you've watched my previous vlogs, you'll know I started quite a big, blanket and the idea was that the baby would grow into that blanket because it was huge but then I once I'd got to like the blanket size that I was happy with I also wanted to make a much smaller one that was more portable that can be used um like when they're in their car seat and whatnot and also I wanted the joining colour to be neutral because everything for baby Taylor has been gender neutral and I've really gone in on like the oatmeals and the beiges and like the warm, the warm neutrals basically. Um, so I started this. I had quite a few granny squares knocking around because I have, I just love granny squares and I've got quite a few projects I want to make them with. So like I just dove in and here we are. I absolutely love it. It looks gorgeous. Now, let me tell you the details about the yarn. This blanket is made entirely out of double knit yarn and it's entirely acrylic. And that's like my favourite to work with because you get so many different colours. And no matter the 
brand so no matter what company produced it whether it's sheepies or king cole you can just like intermix them all and it all just vibes really nicely so i have gone with a mishmash of colors for the granny squares and it's basically all just random yarn scrap yarn um all different brands from unbranded to pound shop to king cole to hobbycraft to wilkinson's sainsbury's wherever sells double knit yarn i've probably been and had a look and i just pick out random colors that i like and so i have a lot of random different colors um i'm probably got like 50 to 100 grams of it so it's not enough to make a huge or a decent sized blanket by itself but when you mix it together it's looking good so we put it there for a moment it's made using two round granny squares so i make all of my centers kind of like this i make a huge batch of centers and then i add on the second round and again i've got multiple blankets on the go so i will show you more of these in a moment but all of my granny squares preferred granny squares are two round like this and then I join them together. I join them together using the continuous join as you go method. And I have a tutorial for this here on YouTube and on Instagram if you want to learn how to do it. But basically it means that you crochet them all together um, and it means that there's no ends because you just keep going. The joining colour that I've used is um, Sheepy's Colour Crafter. And I can't remember, but it was like Heslin or Hasselin or something like that. Um, and it's just like this really nice. I definitely need to swap, swap, uh, swap. I definitely need more. I need to go to B&Q, look at all the paint chips and learn some nice words for beige. Because that's what it is, basically. And then I did a border. I did two rows of granny stripe, which hopefully you can see. And then I chose to do this scrap border. I just dove into my yarn buckets and picked out the colors that I've used, which is basically every color in my stash. And then I just did chunks of color and you can either magic knot the yarn together or you can weave in the ends, it's up to you. I just wanted to pull the, all of the colours together. And then I did a final round in the joining colour. So, Granny Stripe is in treble or double crochet, depending on which terminology you use. And then I used a half double crochet and a single crochet after that so i'll put the de the details below of the different terminology and yeah it was really simple to put together it's 13 by 11 granny squares so it's 143 granny squares and it makes like a really decent size i'll show you I'm really, really pleased with it. It looks like, oh, it's just beautiful. Really happy with the way it's turned out. And this has been living with my hospital bag because it's going to be baby's coming home blanket. So I need to go and put that back in a moment. Um, but it's like, it folds up pretty small. It's quite light. I'll definitely weigh it. It's not got that much yarn in it. It's just that it's got a lot of colours in it. So yeah, I'm super happy with that one. Um, just a little disclaimer, because I can already hear the keyboards. You need to supervise your children with crochet because they can get their fingers wrapped around the stitches and it can cut off their circulation. 
So please be mindful if giving crochet or using crochet around children. PSA done. That probably took me like, I don't know, a week or so. I enjoyed it so much and I wanted to make more Granny Square projects. So I came in here, I, ha I couldn't sleep one morning. It might even be Sunday morning just gone. I just couldn't sleep, wanted to start another blanket. Um, I just find making Granny Squares so, so soothing. It's my favorite thing to do. And I love putting them together. I have been making a lot of squares all in the same hook size, which is a 4.5 millimeter hook if you're interested and at least now I can look back and check if I ever need to. Um, and been making loads and loads of the squares because I wanted to make Baby Taylor a bigger one, as I mentioned, and I did start putting that together all in black. I actually finished joining all of that and then I want to back it onto a fluffy um, blanket that I purchased from a, from a store, from a shop in the UK. However, I changed my mind on it because the black is just not a good colour to use around our dog, Albie. It just picks up so much hair and I know it would just annoy me. Um, so I wanted to redo it and join it in neutral. So I am in two minds whether I'm just going to rip it all back so I can reuse the granny squares or keep the black one as something that I use in here because it is a decent sized blanket. Um, so that is actually been stored on top of my Calax for now, but I was making more and more of the squares in loads of different colours because I wanted to make um, Baby Taylor's fluffy blanket, their small baby blanket. I wanted to make a blanket for my bed and I wanted to make some matching cushions for the sofa and one for the bed. So I knew I needed quite a lot of squares, so I just kept cranking them out, cranking them out, cranking them out. <laughs> And the good thing about granny squares is that you can just like take a few balls of yarn and just keep on churning them out. Um, I, as I said, I make the centers and then I put the second round on. So I could take like five balls of wool somewhere with me. Say we're nipping out for like an hour. I could take five different colors with me, make 20 centers fit from each color. And then when I come back, I've got a hundred centers that I can then add the next rounds onto. So as I said, I came into my yarn room Sunday morning and I was like, I want to make more granny squares, but what am I going to use them in? Um, and then because I want to redo the Baby Taylor fluffy blanket, I was like, right, I just need to go get the joining colour. But then I'm trying not to spend too much money and I'm being really mindful of how much yarn that I own as well, because I have a lot. So this Kylax unit is four by four and 10 of the buckets are full of yarn. So to go and get more yarn, I want to make space for it, which means using some yarn up. <laughs> um, I want to run down a lot of the Arun and the four ply that I've got, but I want to keep a lot of double knit because I have a lot of granny square projects in mind and so I like to have loads of different colours so I can make loads of different combinations for my projects and I quite like having a load of granny squares on hand so that once I get an idea I can just dive in and start making the thing. But anyway, we'll come back to that in a minute. So, Sunday morning and I'm like, right, use what you've got, what needs finishing? I pulled this out of one of the bins. To be fair, out of the 10 bins, one of them is just full of partial whips and quite a bit of scrap yarn as well. So I could I could quite easily clear a cube quickly if I use these up. This was completely full. It's just an organza bag that some yarn arrived in, completely full of all of these centers. Um, in my previous home, I made a two round granny square curtain and I decided I wanted to then make a two round granny square blanket and I wanted it really really pink 
and then I got bored. I don't think necessarily that I got bored. I just couldn't see what direction I was going with it because did I want a really, really pink blanket for myself? Not necessarily. So why was I putting all that work in? So it got parked. So I pulled out all these centers and was like, right, these need to be used up because I can clear this and with all of the second round and the joining yarn, that will use up even more, even though it's not really the double knit that I'm trying to clear. But I have a lot of this yarn that I wanted to use up. Um, I think I've got about a kilo of this and it's just from the pound shop and it's in a dusky pink. I originally brought it with a couple of design ideas in mind and then changed tactic because it's not always straightforward in getting hold of pound shop yarn. The colours change very often. Not everyone has access to the shops. So it's not like the greatest thing to design with. So I did pull out a couple of centres and thought maybe I'll make a two round blanket. And I quickly scrapped that idea. I like the three round granny square. That is what I like the look of. So every granny square has got three rounds to it. On here, the third round is the joining colour. Now, I wanted to make another baby blanket, but this, using these colours is very gender specific. So there is a family friend who had a girl back in October and I know she'd really appreciate and look after a blanket. So I decided that that baby, baby Grace, needed a really, really pink baby blanket. So I started adding on all the second rounds. Most of the ends are woven in. I think there's like five on this kebab that need doing. Um, and as I said, I started adding the second round. And in that day alone, I added 190 second rounds to the centers. I only needed 143, but I decided to do extra because I've got plans for some of these to be used up and when it comes to arranging my squares I'm very particular so I needed quite a few different colour combinations so that I could do what I wanted to do. So then I woven the ends on enough to do to put together the first row just to check that I liked what I'd done. Liked what I'd done and then I like started weaving in ends in batches um and then i would add like one or two one or two rows at a time and because it's the same size as baby taylor's i knew that i needed the 11 by 13 so i was laying them out and i couldn't sleep last night so i laid out the remaining seven rows and this is all that i've got now to add on and some of the squares haven't had the ends woven in because I was sort of swapping and changing to make it fit. So this is what we've got so far. It looks so different to my baby's blanket. It's crazy. But this one is entirely pink, yellow, white, tiny bit of lilac, a little bit of grain, a little bit of neutral in there. And I'm on row nine. I don't know actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm part way through row nine and there's going to be 11 rows and then I'm going to do the exact same with the border. So two rounds of granny stripe and then the scrap colours, just pulling bits of it in to border it and I'm tempted to make, because I'm going to have some of this left over, tempted to make like a matching cardigan as well. I just think that'd be really cute. Real cute like. So I'm really pleased with this. And again, the yarn is just random balls of double knit acrylic that I've just accumulated. And then I've got this stitch marker progress keeper on here. And it is a gummy bear and it's glitter. <laughs> And it's like a lilac -y pink, so I've been using that on this one. I bought a set of six of those because I wanted an orange one for Baby Taylor. 
So I'll link those below in case you want to get yourself a set. Um, I started that Sunday morning and just had a heap of centres. And here we are today, Wednesday afternoon, and I'm partway through row nine. I haven't been going all out on it because Monday I had a hospital appointment. And so that was a big chunk of my day. Yesterday, Tuesday, I was really quite tired and fatigued. Um, so I did mainly just wove the ends in. And also I like to give my wrists a bit of a break if I've been crocheting a lot, just so that I don't do myself any injuries. Um, but I couldn't sleep last night, so I added on quite a few rows. And who knows, I might even have all of those rows. I think they'll be on by tomorrow and the border will probably be done by the end of the weekend. So that's another baby blanket done in a week. Um, and I've really I'm really enjoying working on it, but I've signed myself up to make another one. So I kind of want to get this one done so I can get started on the next one. Just because um, <laughs> baby Taylor could arrive at any moment and I want to get the other blanket done as well. I could pause this one because baby Grace doesn't know and the parents don't know that I'm making it. But I've committed to it now, so I want it done. And I've learned that if I put a project down, it's so unlikely for me to go back to it. Hmm. So how cute is that going to be? Because they're all going to be matchy matchy. Hmm. Um, and I've also been making Baby Taylor a cardigan in the joining yarn so that they'll be able to come home in that as well. This is one of my life hacks. When I am setting out the order of my squares, I skewer them like this. I make these granny kebabs on some old straight knitting needles. You can put like a needle stopper or a hair bubble or an elastic band on the end to stop it coming off. And then it just means that as I'm adding, I just take them off and add them on. And it means that I don't have to have them lying around or get muddled up and it speeds up the process because I'm not checking what square to add next. I've already figured all of that out. And I've already mentioned before how I pick my squares and how I set them out and that I'm creating a free guide so you can download all of that. So I won't go into all the details. I definitely spoke about that a lot more on my previous vlog, um, my previous crochet chat. And I'll be sure to link below when that guide is done, whenever I get round to finishing that for you. So yeah, I signed myself up to make another one. Back in December when the condition that I'm dealing with, hyperemesis, um, got really quite heavy, I was searching the hashtags on Instagram to try and just find other people going through it and just to try and find help and I found another lady that was um also going through a HG pregnancy is her second one and um yeah she was sharing her experiences and just being very very open which encouraged me to share mine actually um and it was just obviously you don't want to see anybody else suffering but it was just so reassuring to have somebody to reach out to and there's been so many things that we've discussed that I just would never speak to anybody about if they haven't had a high premises pregnancy because it's just so hard to comprehend and understand unless you've lived through it or you've been close to somebody who's gone through a pregnancy like this um and yeah I reached out the other day and just said I'd love to make your baby a blanket because she's due like two weeks before or after me like we're really close in due dates um and I was like I wanted to check that it's your style because if not like granny squares can be a bit marmite like not everybody would like this for their child um but she was like 110 percent yes and um, basically she's doing the whole gender neutral thing as well gender is a surprise so to make it just very similar to this one so I've counted up the squares that I've got leftover from the bigger blanket I was making for baby Taylor and there's 144 I only need 143 to make the blanket and I've already got the joining colour but what I am going to do is just make a few more squares just to mix in because um I've obviously gone through and cherry picked 
all the different colours for this one. So I just need to add in a few more um, to my pot so that I've got like a nice mix of colour. Definitely need to use a bit more red because there wasn't many red reds in the squares and greens and things like that. So going to do that once I finish Baby Grace's blanket and put the new blanket together that's going to be gifted. And I, again, I was thinking maybe making a matching cardigan, but I'm not sure. Depends largely on time as well. In terms of other blankets, I really want to make a granny square blanket for my niece. And what I've decided is the yellow fluffy blanket that was originally going to be used for baby Taylor, I'm going to use for my niece's blanket. I'm going to do the same thing where I make a really big granny panel and I'm going to back them together. Still haven't quite, quite 100% figured out how I'm doing that. I've got a very good idea. I haven't actually done it yet. And I'm going to use mainly pinks for that, but I am going to mix in pops of other colours as well. Um, so these will all get used up and it will give me a... Where did they go? Hang on. And these, a lot of these will go into it as well. That blanket was something like 22 by 13, so it needs a whole lot more squares. So I will be adding in a load more second rounds, but also I'm gonna go through and add in different colors like that as well, um, just so it's not 100% pink and yellow like this one, but pink and yellow will be the main colors. So that's plans for, I've got, Technically two granny square blankets in the works at the moment, though I may rip down the black sparkle one and repurpose the squares in all honesty. Um, the only thing holding me back is I've woven in some of those ends after I joined it all, which means it's gonna be harder to take apart. That's the only reason I'm holding back. Um, but there's like, however many squares in there that I could repurpose, but then it doesn't take me that long to, to make them. But then am I gonna use that blanket much if it's joined in black? I don't know. So quite likely to rip that one back and reuse the squares and then reuse the joining yarn for other projects I've got in mind. Um, so I've got two granny square blankets in progress, plus one that I want to gift, no, plus another two that I want to gift. So that's quite a lot of granny squares. On top of that, I also want to make the one for our bed, which would be again, a fluffy blanket with the granny squares on top. And then there's the cushion. So there's quite a lot of granny squares to come, but I mean, I think that's what I'm known for. And this just makes me so happy. They're so easy to pick up the combinations the color possibilities it's just endless and it's something that i can make in stages i think my favorite stage is actually joining it all together just the continuous crochet just adding on another one and another one and another one and another one it's my favorite thing to do so that is my whips i do have i did technically start another granny square blanket in four ply <laughs> I'm not going to show that um, just because it's more experimental. So I'm just going to leave that off the podcast for now. Let myself have some fun with it. And then if it pans out, I'll show you. If it doesn't, then there was no pressure on me. Um, and I have been knitting as well. I've been knitting on um, a jumper for me, like a sweater. And I've been knitting on an item for Baby Taylor. Again, I'm not going to show them because I've got like this much on each one. So I'll show you them next time, next month. And they might even be finished objects by then as well. And it's also useful because the one I'm making for me is using chunky weight yarns. I'm holding like three yarns together. So that will really help clear out a big section of one of these bins, one of these buckets as well. So that's cool. 
So I've got like a box next to our bed and it's got all of my whips in it, but it's the granny squares that I always pick up. Also, who remembers these? I made a stack of these back when I was in my own home. So two or three years ago with a project in mind, finally picked them up again because that project's quite likely to happen. You watch, you won't see them again for another three years. Okay, on to acquisitions. I guess the biggest acquisition has been this room because I did a glow up on this room. So you can see my reflection in my big mirror. You're actually on my windowsill at the moment because I feel like it gives me the best light. And <laughs> I've got a birthing ball in here because it's actually really comfy and I've been bouncing away on that. Um, and... I did debate moving the chair out of the way so I could be on that whilst <laughs> recording. <laughs> Might swap still. Um, but I went and got the Kallax units when we went to Ikea to get Baby Taylor's crib. And so I've got a 2x8 Kallax unit under my desk. And then I've got the 4x4 next to my desk. And um, if you go back to any of my previous vlogs, before I just had like this really big open unit at the back there um, and it was just quite messy and chaotic. So I knew that I wanted to get in here organized, which I have achieved. Um, and by doing that, it's really helped me like refocus on what projects I want to put out there, what yarn I've got that I want to use up. Um, there's a bit of yarn in, in there that I was thinking of maybe gifting on. I potentially could just say goodbye to it and that would clear up a big chunk of space. Um, and I just feel much clearer in myself on t in terms of the projects I want to work on, where things are, and it's so much easier to get to my yarn now because before my yarn was stacked up in big, clear um, plastic boxes that I had to like lift down, which was fine. But now the more I'm getting into the pregnancy, it just became more of a hassle, to be honest. So my biggest acquisition has to be the glow up of this room. I absolutely love it in here now. Um, and I have found myself spending more and more time in here as well, which is lovely. And then I've got my desk set up and I've got um, a keyboard, wireless keyboard and mouse now. So when I'm typing, my posture is much, much better. So yeah, just really happy with everything in here. And because I had to go through my yarn and organise. I just made a promise to myself that I'm just not adding to stash. The only time that I'm adding to stash basically is to get like a joining colour. Um, and I know at some point I will give myself a chunk of money and top up my double knit because the buckets are starting to look a bit low. And as you know, I've got loads of granny square projects that I want to make. So acquisitions this month has been a book i got this book it's called knitting from the top down by barbara g walker i got it second hand um because it is an old book and the day it arrived i just sat and read it pretty much from cover to cover it was originally published in 1972 and this one was published in 1996 and i would have been five or six years old so I thought top-down knitting in the round was like quite a new concept, but if this was published in the 70s, it's been around for a long, long time. The reason I purchased this is because I have been designing my own top-down items for Baby Taylor. I wanted just a little bit of a better understanding of some of the principles. I wanted a few more, a bit more guidance. So I got this. Um, I think it cost me like £23 is quite a bit for a second hand book but it's really really good so i've got that in terms of the design i've just found that i've not really had the headspace with um all the hospital appointments and the fatigue and exhaustion 
So I've just been dabbling with swatches and trying things out, but to completely step back and took the pressure off myself. And it's something that I will pick up later on in the year when I have that mind space to put towards it. But reading this has been really, really helpful and really given me a lot of clarity. And then the other acquisition is I nipped into Hobbycraft earlier today and I picked up these four. And it's their Everyday DK 50 grams, 100% acrylic. It's their own brand line. And I just picked out these four colours because I don't have them in stash. And um, as I said, I'm going to make some more granny squares to go into the baby blanket that I'm gifting. Um, it's like £1.50 for 50 grams. So I do feel like it's a little bit pricey. So I didn't get many of them. But this one's mint green. This one's orange. Um, orange has been a craving throughout this pregnancy, so I had to have this yarn. This one is teal. It's like a nice petroly blue. And then this one is called purple. And I don't have a purple that shade. So that would just help because I'll be able to make different combinations just so that when it comes to putting the blankets together, I've got more options. Um, and as I said, I definitely at some point just going to like use 50 quid or something and just put an order in on Lovecraft's or Wool Warehouse and just get loads of random different balls of yarn just so that I can top up my yarn to make more blankets. So yeah, I haven't purchased any more yarn because I'm trying to use what I've got. Don't think I've purchased any more patterns because I'm trying to use what I've got. So that's a sweet and simple, sweet and simple, short and simple acquisitions section. Now let's go on to HGDC. Now I have an entire section for HGDC. Usually it comes first because I show you the patterns I'm working on and whatnot. Um, I think the biggest update for HGDC is, and this kind of just merges into life updates as well, is I'm officially on maternity leave. So as of Monday the 9th of May, I posted on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, that I'm taking maternity leave. Um, I have been dealing with this pregnancy, so I wasn't really posting much at the start of the year. And then from about February onwards, I was really trying to like, really show up, really post, because the more I post, the more sales I do get, and then the more money it's in the bank, the less I'm gonna be worrying, and on and on and on. And also, it's just been nice to connect to everyone and just be like, here's an update, or this is happening, and just to find other people on social media with similar pregnancy experiences, and talk about granny squares, of course. Um, but then, A few weeks back, went to hospital, had an okay appointment, but just fatigue, fatigue, exhaustion, and just emotional roller coaster, and all of that is just really set in. I was finding it really hard to show up on social media. And then I was getting quite a few like messages like, Are you okay? Is baby here? And I did consider maybe starting to post again because I'm starting to feel a bit more like myself. But then I just figured that baby's due at any point and then I wanted to take some maternity leave so I'm just going to start it. And if um, I was in a conventional job, you most likely would be on your maternity leave by 36 weeks anyway. So that's what I've decided to do. And that basically means that I'm not going to be posting on social media until baby arrives or I decide to return. And I'm, in my mind, I've earmarked my return as August. Just which date, I'm not entirely sure because baby could arrive tomorrow or they could arrive this time next month. So yeah, um, I think it's just gonna be really fluid and I can just choose, can't I? Because I'm my own boss at the end of the day. Um, I've sorted out all of the forms to sort out my maternity allowance and all those sorts of things so yeah it feels good and it means that I don't know all of a sudden I just got this burst of creativity of all the products that I want to make 
during my maternity leave. Um, most of them being granny square blankets. <laughs> so you won't see me on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook. Um, and I've put a big thing in my bio so everyone knows that I am just, I've just stepped away for a little bit. Um, and thank you so, so much for anyone that's commented with your well wishes. One thing that I have decided though for me is that I'm not going to just stop my YouTube. Um, I've already, I've been vlogging quite a lot and I've really been enjoying vlogging. I think it's because it gives me a chance to speak to someone, even though I know it's one way. Sometimes I'm home alone so much that it's just nice to pick up the camera and talk. Also, um, it's really nice to share what's been going on and updates and things like that. And it's like a social interaction that if I don't have the energy, it doesn't matter because I, you can you can say and do a lot within five minutes whilst you're in bed um so all that to say that i've got like four or five vlogs already recorded some of them i've got three edited at this point as well that i've already scheduled to come out in following weeks so you might see vlogs for a couple of months yeah it just depends when baby arrives and when i start picking up my camera and editing um but i'm not really putting like hard and fast rules on myself so I would um, turn on your notifications on Instagram and turn on your notifications here on YouTube so that you're notified when vlogs come up. That way, when I announce that baby's here, you will be able to find out. Yeah, I've just really been enjoying YouTube. I just enjoy putting the vlogs out there. It's quite nice to like show the progress of these projects as they build. Um, I've been doing little bits and pieces for the HDDC hub as well. I've actually started getting samples for physical products. Let me show you. Again, I have been vlogging and so I've got an entire, I've got two vlogs recorded that show you the behind the scenes of making these. So I'm just going to show you quickly, I'm not going to go into full details, but I've had these desk pads created. Um, it says a lot can happen in a day and it's a daily planner basically and it's got um you put your date you pick the day you put what your priorities are and then you schedule so if you know that you've got an appointment at 9 a.m or lunchtime whatever and you put that all in there it's got your to-do list and it's got your notes so that might be don't forget to do xyz tomorrow it might be an affirmation and they just tear off at the top oh I am so happy with these. I'm so, so impressed. Um, I was asked by some a viewer how I keep so organised and how I do all of my planning. And basically from the moment that I went self-employed, I started printing out sheets like this daily to plan my day to make sure I was staying on track. And then I started thinking about how I'd prefer it if it was in a desk pad and I can just rip it off at the end of the day. So I looked into getting them printed. Now, the place that I got these printed from, the minimum order was two. So I've got two of these. And I also did another design, which you'll have to watch the vlogs for. And the minimum, minimum order was four. So I've got plenty of those to keep me going. But what I was thinking of doing is also adding them to the HDDC shop so that I can actually provide physical resources to people. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're a designer or not, like you can use this no matter what your job is because it doesn't have anything crochet specific on it. Um, so if you need a way to plan your day, I got you boo. I'm really, really happy with them. Quite like the way it smells as well. And because I was on a roll, I've had all these ideas percolating for so, so long. And I got this room sorted and I was like, I have the headspace now to commit to getting these things done. So I've also designed some more physical products and I've actually had the first delivery of the samples today. And here in this box, is my next lot of samples. I'm desperate to open it, but, oh, I can see a bit of it there. 
I didn't open the other one on camera and I really want to do an unboxing. Um, I've got an appointment at 2 p.m. and it's getting close to that time now. So I've left this unopened, don't know how I've managed that, so that I can open it with bread and also do it on camera so that I can show you it later. So, um, comment below with what your guesses are with what samples are in that package. Comment below. Um, really intrigued as to what you think it is, but I'm so, so excited to open it. <sighs> so many good things come in. Um, but I'm not gonna say any more on that because as I said, I've done two behind the scene, behind the scenes studio vlogs showing me creating those samples. And then the next vlog you'll see will be me doing the unboxing. Ah, so yeah, that's everything for today. Um, I've done my finished objects. I've done my works in progress, did my acquisitions, given you the updates, you know about my samples. Ah, I can't wait to open that. So I need to go and get myself ready for my next appointment. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I don't know if there'll be another like sit down crochet chat um, for May. It depends when baby arrives, but there are definitely four or five other vlogs, more like studio vlogs. So crochet with me. There was one where I spent, it was the Sunday just gone in the garden making all of these. And then there's the studio vlog showing you the samples that I'm creating. So I'll definitely see you around and um, yeah, what do you think I've made? Other than a baby that I'm cooking, obvs. So catch you in the next one tribe. Take care and thank you for watching.